The Lord be with you as we gather and worship at home, wherever you are watching this. May God's word fill you today as we focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Obviously, we are recording these services because we cannot gather together in God's house as brothers and sisters in Christ. And yet we want to proclaim God's word to you that we may find our strength, our forgiveness, our healing and life in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll be following the order of service, Divine Service 1. It's printed on page 151 in Lutheran Service Book, if you have a hymnal at home. There'll be a couple of songs or hymns that we'll be singing. The music should play on the screen and the words shall be available for you to be able to follow along. Or if you'd like to, I encourage you to also sing along as we worship our Lord. And so let us sing our first hymn as we ask the Lord to bless our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment of silence for self-examination and reflection on God's word. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture readings for this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, the Old Testament reading, is recorded in Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 1, and it goes to verse 14. I won't be reading that right now, but I encourage you to read that passage, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14, as personal devotions, or take time to read that, as it's the account of Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones, and God coming and creating and giving life to people. The epistle reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Again, I won't be reading that passage of scripture at this time. I encourage you to read that at home. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. As it reminds us of the power of faith that God has given to us by the Holy Spirit, that we have life in the name of his son, Jesus. And the gospel reading is recorded in John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. I'll read that here in just a moment, and it'll serve as the basis for our sermon. John 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, 
Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the sermon today is the Gospel reading, 
read earlier, uh, John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, who shows his glory in situations of human need, our Lord sees the big picture. Let us take comfort in that of those who can't. Paul talks about that. He touches on that in 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 13, verse 12, where he says, For now we see in a mirror dimly. This is our human condition right now. He wrote in the first century, in those days, mirrors were nothing more than polished brass, much different than the mirrors we have today. For, for the people of that day, that made sense. And it does make sense to us today that we don't see things completely clearly in this world. He also said in that verse, for now I know in part. And so we don't see the big picture. We know certain things. We know limited things. And sometimes it causes a lot of anxiety. But again, let's take comfort in the fact that our God always sees the big picture. Paul, in that verse, in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 13, 12, he gives us something to look forward to. Let me read the whole verse now. He says, for, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. And so we look forward to the day when we will know the Lord completely, and that we too will see the big picture. But right now, we don't. And right now, we are living in a very unusual time. It's a new thing for all of us, this worldwide pandemic. And while we can't see the big picture, we see we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know how far it's going to go. The Lord does know, and we take comfort in that. We see the threat of the health care system being overrun, like it happened in Italy, where the flood of sick people surpass the resources of medical aid. But our God sees the big picture. He sees the innovative procedures and products that are going to be built and put together, and even now are being put together, all by his blessing and care and interest in human beings and care for them. We see the call for social distancing. We see the closures of schools, of businesses, of Restaurants, we see the closures of churches as well. All for the goal of slowing down the infection of the virus. But only God can see how many people have been kept safe or will be kept safe, how many lives will be saved. God sees that picture. We see the devastating effects on the economy. We see the rising unemployment. We see the worried look on people's faces, and they are there. But the Lord sees how he will use this experience to call people back to him and to use this experience to help people realize their need for him. And he will use this certainly to strengthen the faith of many, to strengthen our faith. Yes, good news. The Lord sees the big picture, and it's good news because the Lord loves us dearly. Just like he loved Martha, her sister Mary, and their brother Lazarus. As we look at this familiar gospel story today, we think about those people in that story who didn't, who couldn't see the big picture. And the initial actions of Jesus would perhaps raise doubts in their mind about the Lord's love for them. Well, we know the story. Lazarus became sick. He came down with something, maybe a virus. And he was getting worse and worse. And the sisters were concerned about his welfare. His family and friends saw there was, he was in great danger. And they decided to get word to Jesus and let him know what was going on. They knew that he could help. But Jesus at this time was some distance away. He wasn't in Judea. He was out of the country, outside, and when they found him and told him the news that Lazarus was threatened, he said, and he did something that was hard to understand. The first words after he heard the news, he said, this illness does not lead to death. 
and we're confused. It certainly did. We know that. And yet his disciples might have taken it as, well, there's no big threat. He's going to be okay. It's going, he's going to recover. They didn't know yet what Jesus had in mind. Jesus was not going to let death be the final answer for Lazarus. And then he said something else. He said, it is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. That must have been puzzling words for the disciples to hear as he responded to the news about Lazarus. It's for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. They probably had no idea. It might have been like what happens for us. We hear a word of God. It goes in one ear and out the other. Well, and then Jesus did something that was really strange. After he found out about Lazarus, it says he delayed for two days. He remained there. He didn't go at once. He delayed. He waited until it was too late by human standards. By the time he got back to Bethany and Judea, Lazarus was already dead, and he'd been in the tomb for four days. What picture did the sisters, the family and friends, the people of the town, what did they see in that response of Jesus? Perhaps they saw that Jesus really didn't care. They saw that Jesus led an opportunity to really help go by, to slip away, and it was too late. You notice that both sisters said the same thing to Jesus as they met him separately. The very first words they said to Jesus was, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's almost like they said, why did you delay? It's a question that we have sometimes in our lives as we face difficulties. We think, well, Lord, where are you right now? Why are you delaying? Well, as he was there with the grieving family, the sisters, Mary, as she was there, and they talked, and they were grieving. Jesus joined in their grief. He was moved by their grief. And, and we have that recorded, the shortest verse in the New Testament, in John 11, verse 35, it says, Jesus wept. It's interesting the different pictures that the people had of that event there, that situation. They saw a different picture at that moment. It, it tells us in verse 36, so the Jews said, see how he loved him. He, was, he loved Lazarus. He's weeping over Lazarus. And then in verse 37, we also hear another picture. Some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Good question. But Jesus, who always sees the big picture, was not finished yet. His delay was not a picture of his disinterest or inability. His tears were not the final way that he would show his love and care for his good friend whom he loved. Already we read in the gospel, this, this gospel here, the words of comfort and strengthening to Sister Martha at the death of her brother. We remember this was not the first time that Jesus and Martha had conversation. We, we remember the time that Martha invited Jesus over to her house. It's recorded in Luke chapter 10. And of course we remember how she was busy getting things ready and she was distracted by all the preparations and how she was irritated with her sister Mary who was not lifting a finger to help her. Instead she was listening to Jesus. And Martha comes to Jesus, don't you care that... I have to do all the work by myself. Martha couldn't see the big picture. She was distracted. She was busy. And aren't we distracted? Aren't we busy? Aren't we dealing with this situation or that concern? Or we have this duty to perform and we have this worry to worry about. And we don't see the big picture sometimes ourselves. But we need help. And the Lord was helping Martha even then at the house to start seeing the big picture. Mary was listening to Jesus' words and Jesus said to Martha, with love and care, he said, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. One thing is necessary. What was he talking about? Of course, he was talking about 
his life-giving word, his word of truth, his word of life. It's the one thing necessary. And the gospel story for us today is evidence that Martha had already started to see the big picture of God's power and grace. Listen to the account again. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Jesus spoke those words to her. He speaks these very words to you and to me today. He tells us and reminds us, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe that? By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can say, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who came into the world for me. So Jesus delayed. Why? To strengthen the faith of those he loved. We see the big picture here. He delayed so that he could teach them just who he really is, that he is the Son of God, the Christ, the resurrection, and the life. Jesus delayed to bring glory to God and to display that glory that others might believe in him too. And so he moved to the tomb of Lazarus. We hear these words as he stood before the tomb of Lazarus. He prayed to the Father. He lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth, as you would do for a corpse. But now Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. With the situation that we're in right now, it might be easy for us to doubt that the Lord cares about us or loves us. But our Lord, who always sees the big picture, is always moving in a direction to help us. We saw that in the gospel today. He moved back into dangerous territory to help his friend Lazarus and to help the people who loved him and those all around to help them know the true life that he came to bring. And he raised Lazarus from the dead, giving him that blessing of life again in this world, though that he would die again and then, but still live forever by God's grace. So Jesus is always moving in the direction to help us. That's why he came back to Jerusalem. He would go there because he saw the big picture of what God's plan was for the salvation of the world, for the salvation of you and me. And he took his place and he received all of our sins and the sickness of our sin put him to death as he died on the cross, as he suffered for us, as he died our death, as he took our sins and paid for every one of them to give us life. And he rose from the dead victorious for you and for me. Yes, the Lord cares. The Lord blesses us with life. And he also blesses us with faith to live day by day in this world, this dangerous world, to know that he is with us and that we need not fear. May the Lord bless us, the Lord who sees the big picture, the Lord who loves us and gave himself for us. 
that we might stay strong. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us turn to our Lord in prayer. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your spirit upon them. Join us together with the communion of saints in Christ, even though we must for a time stand apart. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your spirit that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless your children and the homes where they live. As more families have the opportunity to be at home together, to be at work in their lives, that as a family, they may gather around your word and devotions and prayer. We ask that you provide opportunities for memories to be made and relationships strengthened through activities and meals, through moments of life that would not have normally happened. Lord, we also pray that you would help families complete the work that still needs to get done, whether that be school work for children or jobs and employment for adults who are working from home. You know the adjustments to life that your families have faced Give what is needed, patience in a new schedule, peace in the midst of stress, and forgiveness when offense and hurts occur. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic, and teach us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, your Son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endurance to all who suffer, all who are troubled, to all who are hurting. Bring healing to all of those in need, especially to those who are listed on our prayer chain here at the church and school, and for all those that we name silently in our hearts and minds. Give your healing and assure your people of your strength that gives us courage and comfort to live by faith trusting in your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O gracious God, you daily and richly grant us all things we need for this body and life. Teach us to trust in you to provide all that we need. Give us wisdom to use the gifts you have given faithfully to care for our families, to help our neighbors, and to support the work of our congregation and school. Preserve us from fear and greed as we live and work separated and distant from people, knowing that we are never separated from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And blessed Lord, your word continues to go forth and bear good fruit. Bless the work of your church around the world, that your word may continue to be proclaimed to reach the hearts and lives of your people. 
for the gift of technology and the means to deliver your word to your people. Thank you, Lord. Continue to strengthen your people by your word and spirit. They, they may always trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, God Almighty, continue to strengthen and sustain us by the power of your Son, Jesus, that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life and the confidence of his death and resurrection, knowing that he rose victorious over our enemies, our fears, and our sin, and that we have life in his name. All these things and whatever else you would have us pray, we ask that you provide through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. Everybody, thank you for joining us for our first virtual worship service. It's hard not being together or seeing everyone, and yet it's important for us to hear God's word and the promises of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. would encourage you to continue in personal devotions. We've got several online with the candlelight conversations that we have been doing. The teachers at the school have several. Encourage you to find comfort in that word of Jesus and his word to make it through the challenges as we're not able to encourage one another face to face. Also, please know that Pastor and I are available for a conversation to be able to visit with you and to offer a private uh, communion if that's something you would so desire. We are at the church much of the day, um, but if you want to make sure we catch us, we certainly can set up an appointment and uh, make that available to you to receive God's good gifts. And God's rich blessings to you and your families. Um, we also pray the Lord will 
uh, end this sequestration soon, that we can be back together again uh, in his house, worshiping and growing together in Christ. In the meantime, we continue to grow and we serve, and we serve our neighbor uh, daily in, through faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ. So uh, God's blessings to you.